Hello. The next tool we will explore is Selenium, which approaches the web differently than Beautiful Soup. We start by discussing what Selenium is, when it should be used, and how to get started using it. We see how we can navigate the web with Selenium just like a human, but better. Finally, we will see how to extract data with Selenium that would not normally be accessible when getting a web page via the requests package, such as web page elements added via JavaScript. Let's start. In this video, we will see what Selenium is. I will discuss what it is for and when it should be used. I say what we need in order to use the package, and I give a brief demonstration of how to run Selenium. Selenium is software for automating a web browser. It was designed for automated web page testing, but it is also useful for web scraping. Selenium allows for a script to interact with a web page like a human would interact with it. You can click buttons, enter text into text boxes, navigate web pages, even take screenshots. Why do web scrapers use Selenium? Packages such as requests get documents before they are rendered by a browser. With Selenium, we get access to a web page as a human would see it. There are interactions with web pages that may not be available without Selenium. For example, we may want to click page elements, fill out forms, and interact with web pages in human-like ways, and Selenium allows us to automate this interaction and work with the results. Finally, there's the issue of dynamic content, such as content rendered by JavaScript. Using just requests won't allow us to get access to this content. We must use a package like Selenium in order to access it. Here's how to use Selenium. First, install the Selenium package. Next, you will need to download a web driver for your browser of choice, the browser that Selenium will control. These are available for free online. The drivers are obviously platform dependent. So in this video's code, you will need to adapt based on your system if you are following along. I am using a Windows system. Chrome driver is the driver that automates a Chrome browser. This is the browser and thus the driver that I will be using in these videos. Gecko driver is the analogous driver for Firefox. The PhantomJS driver automates a PhantomJS browser. While the previous two browsers are browsers used by people and thus are visible, PhantomJS is an invisible browser that exists for developers. It was developed for web testing, but web scrapers like to use it as well. Even though the browser is invisible, it is still a browser. It is even possible to take screenshots of what this invisible browser is rendering as if it were visible. When you get a driver, you either need to make it available in your system's path variable or you will need to provide its location to Selenium when starting. I do the latter here on Windows. Let's see a demonstration. Here I import the web driver object from the Selenium package. This is going to be the object we use to create the driver that we will be using. It's often useful to import the sleep function from the time package since you may want to be slowing down Selenium in between spots. Here I mostly want to slow down Selenium for the sake of a presentation. What will happen is I'm going to run this code block. I have the Chrome driver in the working directory and I create a driver that uses this driver. I then visit a web page and then once I visit this web page I will close. What's going to happen is a new instance of Chrome will open up. This instance being controlled by Selenium, although it is just like any other Chrome browser. In particular, if you're wanting to look at the elements of the page as you're controlling it, you're welcome to do so. The developer tools still work. So let's see this in action. We now see a new browser window. Notice that in the case of Chrome, we are alerted that this new browser window is being controlled by automated software, in this case Selenium. The script then moves on to the next command, which is to move to the web page I requested, the web page for a newsletter named PyCoders Weekly. In particular, we're looking at their archive, which is an example of the issue that I have discussed in previous videos and in this video as well, where some content may be locked behind JavaScript, and it won't appear if you were to download directly via requests. Right now, you don't see anything. Give it a few seconds and you will see the list of past articles appear.